Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna show you how to use inline and anchored graphics in Adobe InDesign. So you may be asking yourself, why do I need to know that? Well, the first time I ever had to use this technique was in a job interview. It was down to me and two other candidates, and the question was, can you show us how inline graphics works in Adobe InDesign? I thought, this must be a joke, right? But I kept my mouth shut and went ahead and demonstrated how it worked. When I was done, they told me it was very close between the three of us, but that I had the job because I was the only one who could answer the question. So there's one big benefit of learning this technique, and we're going to show you a few others as well. So to get started, we're going to show you a few issues you might run into if you're not using inline or anchored graphics. If you wanted to place this logo at the top of the page here, you could put it there. You could click on your text. You could make the box smaller, and there you'd have your logo and your text where you want it. Now we're gonna place these two icons. We'll move this one over by the Facebook, and we'll move this one over by Twitter. Now we have the logo where we want it. We have the two icons where we want them. And lastly, we're gonna take a copy of this box we're going to put it behind the text. Just to make that stand out a little more. So the next day your boss comes in and says, Hey, I need you to move a few things around. I need you to move the text and everything to the middle row. And we're going to put a picture on the left. So you click on the text, you move it over, you get it put in position. And then the telephone rings. You're on the phone, you're talking, you get the logo moved, you're talking on the phone, you click the picture, you get it put in, because you're not really paying attention to what you're doing because you're on the phone. Then you get all of that done. You remember they want a logo down in the corner here. So you bring that in. You get it sized down to the right size. You get the color changed. You get off the phone. You're like, whoa, I'm done, okay. So you send it off, you get it printed, it comes back and it's wrong. Well, you got distracted and since everything wasn't connected, you moved part of the graphics, but you didn't move the ones you forgot were behind the picture. So now the whole job has to be reprinted and your boss is not very happy. So we're going to show you some ways to prevent that. Let's just back up and we'll start over new. So the first thing we're going to do is click in this text box. We'll return down a few spaces, get our selection tool, click on our logo, click this little blue dot, drag it over to the beginning of our sentence and let it go. Next thing we're going to do is grab the graphic, drag it over here above our text, get it in position, and let go. Now at first appearance you might be thinking, that looks just like it did before. Well, the only difference is we anchored it to the text. So when we click on the text and move it, then that graphic moves right along with it. So again, to anchor a box, click the blue dot, drag it over, Place the cursor where you want to apply the anchor. Then you can relocate the graphic to wherever you want. And again, when we click on the text box and move it, the graphic moves along with it because we've anchored it to the text. If you wanna move that anchor point, click on the graphic, left click on the anchor, you'll see you'll get your cursor back and you can move the anchor point to anywhere in the text. So we can move it here to the beginning of the C, let it go. And now this box is anchored up here before the C instead of being anchored down here after the T. And in case you want to see where your graphics or boxes are anchored, we can come up to view extras, show text threads, and it'll show you where your box is anchored. So this corner of the box is anchored here. Again, if you want to move this anchor point, left click on the anchor, 
like move it to where you want the anchor to be, let go, and it'll re-anchor it here. And when this box is anchored, it can be anywhere. Say you were doing a book, and you wanted to have a box for side notes, you would draw your box for the side notes, get the direct select tool, so left click the blue dot, drag it over here to our text, let it go. Now it's connected. So now anywhere this text box goes, the side notes are gonna go with it. So now when you click on this text box and move it, everything moves right along with it. And that's one way you can keep all the pieces of your document together. Okay, so when you have one of the graphics selected, you'll notice the little anchor icon. Like I said, we can left click and move the anchor point. But if you're needing a few more options, you can either right click to bring up the contextual menu, come down to anchored object, choose options. You can also choose release, which will disconnect that from the rest of your text. You can also option left click on the anchor and that'll bring up your options as well. You can see here, you can choose where you want the connection point to be. So instead of connecting at the bottom of the box, we could click here and that would move the connection point to the top of the box. And then we would just need to adjust the placement back in our document. But now you can see it's connected to the top of the box, to the text box, instead of from the bottom of the graphic up here. And if you ever want to see the little hidden character that it uses for the connection point, go to text, show hidden characters, and you'll see this little Y with the two lines through it. That's the character it uses as an anchor point. There's one there, there's one here, and then there's one down here. Let's blow that up a little bit so you can see it. You can see the little Y with the two lines through it here. You can see one here. And then down here at the bottom of the page where this graphic is connected, you'll see the Y with the two lines through it here. Let's go back and hide those. Now we're just gonna click on this box, right click on the anchor, anchored object and release. And we're just gonna delete that box for now and move this back over here. So that's pretty much it for the anchored part of the graphics. You can anchor it anywhere. You can move them. You can move the graphics around wherever you want them to appear. But wherever this text moves, just remember the graphics gonna move too. So the next thing we're gonna do is insert some graphics in the text. So I'll drag a copy over here. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways you can insert these. The first way is similar to anchoring the image to the text. We're gonna click on the graphic. We're gonna click the little blue dot. We're gonna drag it over here, right before the F. And before we let go, we're gonna press the shift key, let go of the mouse, and then you can let go of the shift key and it places the graphic in the line of text. The second way we can do it is we'll select the image. We'll do Command X to cut it. We'll come over here, get the text tool. We'll click right before the T and we'll press Command V to paste it in. And you can see both of the graphics are lined up with the baseline of the text. So if we wanna center those, we can grab the selection tool and we'll click on the graphic and we'll arrow it down and center that up. Another way we can do it is click on the graphic, option click on the anchor, and we can click the little down arrow and center it, or we could top in a number. And by using the options panel, you can make sure that the graphics are centered exactly the same for each graphic. Let's click on this one, option click, and we can see that one is a little bit different than this one, because this one we put 0.11 and this is 0.08. So we changed that to 0.11. And now they're both lined up exactly the same with the text. So now that we've put those in line with the text, when we click on the text box and move it, you'll see that those icons move with the text. So now when your boss comes in and says, hey, we need to add a line of text here, you can put your cursor there and you can add the text. And you'll see the text flows right along with it. Or if your boss says, hey, I wanna take out this top paragraph, delete that, and the text moves up with it. And then when your boss tells you, hey, I need to move this to the next page, click it, move it. Then you can come over here and get that picture, put it in. 
without fear of any of your graphics getting left behind the picture that you forgot about. So I just wanna quickly go over how to insert the graphics into your text one more time. If you left click on the blue dot, drag it over, that will create an anchor point. And you can move the graphic around, and when you move the text, it'll flow with the text, like the logo at the top. If we click on it again, right click, go to anchored object and release. If we left click, drag it over, hold down the option key before we let go, it'll bring up the options for the anchored object. If we click the blue dot and drag it over, hold down shift and let go of the mouse, it'll insert the graphic into our text. If we click on the graphic, command C to copy, grab our text tool, click on the text, command V, that'll paste it in. And if we click on it, grab the little blue box, drag it over, hold down shift and option, let go of the mouse, It'll place the object in the text and open the options window at the same time. One other thing I want to show you about the inline graphics is we'll grab this logo, we'll make a copy of it, we'll scale that down, and let's say we have this logo. We click the blue dot, hold shift, and we accidentally drop it there. Well, that's not exactly where we wanted it to go, but there's an easy fix. We'll right click on the anchor, hold down the shift key, and we can reposition that graphic to the right position. Then if we need to scale it down, Shift Option Command, click, scale it down. While we have it selected, we can arrow that down into position, and there we have it. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is applying effects to the graphics and text boxes. And just like any other graphic in your document, you can add effects to these inline and anchor graphics as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is we'll click on this icon here, We'll come over here to our effects panel, go down to drop shadow, and you can see settings for the object, it added a drop shadow, and we can adjust how that drop shadow is applied. We can adjust the opacity. We can adjust the distance, we can adjust the offset, we can adjust the angle, just like any other graphic. You could also click on this one, come back to the effects, and we could do like an embossed effect. You can turn the preview off and on to see what it looks like, click OK. And along with that embossed effect, we could also come in and add a drop shadow, and we can adjust that. And even with the effects applied, we can still click the anchor, hold down Shift, and we can move those if we need to, and the effects move along with the graphic. And as far as the anchored graphics, same thing. We could add an outline to the box. We could click on the little T. We could add an outline to the text. We could click on it. And with the graphics selected, we could come back over to effects. We could apply a drop shadow to it. Again, we can adjust the drop shadow. We can adjust the distance. We can adjust the opacity and we can adjust the position. We could also change from object to text. We can apply a drop shadow to the text. And again, we can adjust that. We can adjust the opacity and we can adjust the position. And one last thing you could do with the text, you can click in your gradient tool and you can apply a gradient to the text as well. So you can see there's lots of different ways you can apply effects to inline and anchor graphics. So the last thing I'm gonna take a look at is using text on a path and inline graphics. Come over here to a new page, bring a few graphics over with us. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna draw a path with the Bezier pen and we'll get the text on a path tool. Click here. So once we add some text, we basically do it the same way. We can click on the little blue dot, drag it over, shift, put it where we want the graphic to appear, drop it in. And if we want to put one on over here, we can do the same thing, drag it over here and drop it in. Another way you could use this is I'm going to copy here. We could choose our logo here, drag it down, shift and drop it on the path. Another thing we could do is come and command copy that. 
put our cursor there and we can paste them. Just keep pasting them in line. And you could create a custom border or something like that using your logo or your icon or whatever. You could still come back in and customize this. And another cool thing about it is you can select all of them. Come over to effects and you can apply a drop shadow to all of them. Adjust the opacity. We could even add a embossed look. So just like with the other anchor graphics or other inline graphics, we can add effects to it. So I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.